first L2 talk this morning is AS Milan's own Director of Technology, Mr. Stephen Riak. Thanks. All right, let's do this. This is a Santa Maria del Fiore Church in Florence. If you have not been to Florence, I highly recommend it. You can get on the speed train. It's only about two, two hours away. More importantly, this is me standing in front of the Santa Maria del Fiore Church. It is a most beautiful cupola. When you go into the church, it has a beautiful dome, and the dome was built by a man by, by, named Filippo Brunelleschi in the 1440s. And I sat underneath this church with this wonderful dome, and I looked up at it and I said, wow, if this isn't the ultimate STEAM project I've ever seen, without the combination of science, technology, art, and math, the dome simply could not exist. And I wondered how a dome built in the 1440s, before electricity, could actually speak to us in the innovation age. Because we are, in fact, in the innovation age. The information is over. Now, in the innovation age, we have a problem. Well, let's talk about this. We're in the innovation age. Did anybody see this? A couple of weeks ago, some scientists and some researchers developed how to store information in glass in five dimensions. That means you can store 360 terabytes of information in a piece of glass. Now think about that. You can actually record directly onto a piece of glass for 82 years before you run out of space. You can record a whole lifetime simply on a piece of glass. Does everyone remember Superman and his crystals? Yeah, apparently only the Kryptonians can only store about one vine's worth of information on a piece of crystal. So we're doing much better than the Kryptonians. So we really are truly in the innovation age. But we're, if we're in the innovation age, surely that means that we now have an innovative pedagogy to match. An innovative pedagogy that is redesigned and redefined that embraces technology as the new normal. Now, for a long time, we've been talking about how we are raising students for jobs that don't exist yet. And we've actually taken some criticism for that in education, for talking about it. But it's so true. Last week, the World Economic Forum published that students entering the elementary school, 65% of them will be entering jobs that do not exist today. 45% of jobs in the US will be completely automated. If you're an elementary school teacher, think about that. When you go around the classroom and say, what do you want to be when you grow up? The ones that say, I don't know, are actually the ones that are, are thinking in the line of the innovation age. They also said that in order for workers to survive in the future, they need to acquire creative and social skills to survive. So what have we done in education? Well, we've moved from paper learning to technology-based digital learning. But is that enough? Have we embraced the innovation age? Do we have the innovation pedagogy? Are we really asking open-ended questions where students, are built, where students' success will be marked by how their ability to collaborate and be creative? Instead, we've been bogged down by traditional education and almost overwhelmed by standardized testing that tells us what to do. Even worse, Whenever we come up on stage and we talk about digital learners, uh, Generation Y, millennials, what we've done in education is says, oh, these kids are different. They're not normal. Well, then I need a prescription. I need to bring them back to the normal because they're different. That's absolutely the wrong approach. We shouldn't ask them before prescriptions. It's not about how much hours of technology do kids do in a day. It's about embracing the new normal. So let's think about this. How could we bring this new normal into our classrooms? How about we take it outside of our classrooms? Imagine school cafeterias that are urban labs, because in the future, we are going to have a problem feeding all these people. What if we turned all of our school cafeterias into urban farming labs? Imagine elementary students learning about the life cycle by bringing their beans to plant in the school cafeteria. Imagine learning about ecosystems, the environment. Imagine older kids programming Raspberry Pis and Arduinos that plug into the soil, that tweet out information about what the soil and chemistry levels are. Imagine the amount of data 
that you have to analyze, all the statistics you have to take back to class that you can retrieve from here. Imagine your design students talking to scientists in Google Hangouts, bringing that information back, going to their makerspace, printing out a new pot to take down into the lab. That's learning that is cross-discipline, that's learning that is truly authentic, and that is learning that is technology-driven with purpose. And that is learning where the students a success will be measured by their ability to create, collaborate, communicate, and think critically. That's the heart of innovation. Innovation is about creating something new that adds value to the world. It's not a gimmick or a hashtag. And what I'm so excited to see is, uh, what I can't wait to see the elementary school blog posts about how they went to the lab, but in fact, if anybody's seen the fern in my office, no matter how much love you get of a plant, it's going to die. <laughs> um, so imagine the blog post you'll see when the kids actually fail, when the crops fail. Won't it be exciting to read about, yes, we failed, but we are going to work harder next time. Here is our plan to succeed the next time around. So what does this mean? What did I think about, again, with the dome in Florence? So here's the story with Filippo, my friend Filippo. The story goes, in order to find the architect for the dome, they had a competition. And the competition was a bunch of guys sitting around a table, and they said, whoever can make the egg stand up on its own will be the architect for the dome. So picture a bunch of guys standing around a table trying to get eggs. Filippo came in and said, pulled up the egg, looked at it, smashed it down on the table, breaking the bottom half, but creating the perfect dome. Got the job on the spot. So what does that mean for us? As you, leave to as you go through the conference, I want you to think about Filippo and his egg and how you can engage your learners, empower them to embrace the innovation age, and not accept the status quo, not doing what we've always done and embracing the new normal. Thank you.